Everybody, I just want to do a little walk around and close up of my GT 350R. We're just waiting for the sun to go down. I got to give the car a bath. Uh, unfortunately, the car gets dirty very, very quickly. Uh, especially the brakes having really soft compound pads on them. Uh, really, after the first drive, after washing the car, the wheels are already dirty. So, the car's got about 150 miles on it. I'm going to give it probably its uh, third bath uh, already. So, just do a, a quick walk around the car. Uh, talk about some of the features and aspects of it, and then we'll uh, take a look inside for a little bit of a closer up. Um, if you're not too familiar with these cars, the 350Rs have a little bit of a bigger splitter than front splitter than the regular 350s do. They stick out a little bit more. I put a set of those slip lows underneath just to help protect it a little bit. They're a nice little universal thing and they work uh, pretty well. Also you have uh, the red badging that's uh, 350R specific to the cars. Uh, a lot of the panels uh, are modified from the regular Mustangs. The, uh, the fenders and the quarter panel stick out a little bit more. Uh, obviously one of the most uh, known attributes of the 350R are these carbon fiber wheels. Uh, I just try to be extremely careful with them. They're obviously extremely expensive, but uh, I have been driving around with the uh, the carbon fibers on it. Also 350R specific, you have red calipers all around on the car. The brakes are this, actually the same, but the calipers are red on these. So I also have uh, factory wheel locks on and they're kind of ugly but I just left them on uh, for now and also if uh, some people have ever noticed the front wheels they have sort of this white lining around them and the back wheels do not uh, that is actually a, a, a spray on um, I believe it's a ceramic type coating uh, that helps to reflect heat they use something similar I supposedly on the space shuttle because these brakes can get extremely hot if you're tracking the car and it could deform the carbon fiber so that's basically just a heat protectant that's what that is and they don't have it on the back because I assume Back rotors, being they're a lot smaller, they don't get nearly as hot since they're in the back. Um, I have not heavily modified the car, nor will I ever. The only thing I've really done to it so far, I uh, tinted out the windows, and I put these uh, front mud flaps on. They're from, uh, I believe it's pronounced uh, Jaeger Brothers. So they're just a nice little protectant. I like them better than the little foam pieces that you stick in here, because it helps really prevent rocks from... Uh, the car from kicking rocks up along the side and really damaging the paint. These have the Michelin Sport Cup 2s on them. All the new GT350s have the Sport Cup 2s. Tires are super, super sticky, and they're really going to grab and fling everything. I mean, you can see all the rocks already stuck in this. Uh, these tires only have about 150 miles on them. You can see they have very little tread on them. They're really a pretty super aggressive street tire. They're really made, made for track use because they don't last long. Uh, especially for street use. So uh, the actual color of this car is race red. This color has been available since the introduction of this car. Uh, I really like this color. My Raptor is also race red, so I like that the cars kind of match each other. Uh, this is a tech package car, so it's got the turn signals as well as the uh, blind spot monitors uh, built into the mirrors. Uh, again, on the back, red calipers. Uh, again, you don't have the white barrels on them. They don't have that uh, heat protective coating on there. The 350Rs have a slightly larger, they have an actual wing as opposed to a spoiler or now re more recently a swing that the regular 350s have. This is also carbon fiber. Apparently this wing is monumentally expensive. I've heard around $10,000 for this wing. I don't know if that's true, but uh, from some of the information I've seen, it looks to be that expensive for a legitimate one, even though you can buy carbon fiber ones from other manufacturers for like $1,500. So that's, uh, that's pretty crazy if that's true. Uh, again, red badging on it, on the car. Uh, dual exhaust, obviously, a quad tip exhaust if you want to call it that. You have the lower uh, reverse light there. This is the same setup that uh, a lot of other Mustangs have. So this has the, uh, the valves in it, but the 350Rs have no resonators from the factory. So this is a louder car than the, uh, the regular 350s would be. So you have a normal and a sport mode. And sport mode is, uh, it's pretty loud. It's something that the, uh, your neighbors might get a little upset over if you're uh, driving uh, in and out in sport mode, especially uh, early in the morning or late at night. So uh, this is the outside of the car. I'm definitely, the car has a nice profile to it, a nice look to it. I really like the, uh, the wider aspects of this car. I think it really complements the body of the car. Again, you can see a little better on this tire, how this has very, very little tread on it. And this only has 150 miles, but the car looks, uh, looks really good. So let's go take a look in the trunk before we go inside. There's really not a lot in this trunk at all. Uh, they have releases down here just under uh, underneath the trunk itself above where the license plate mounts. So this is fully carpeted and this, like I said, this has the uh, technology package. So you get an in-trunk subwoofer for it. 
And then under here where you could opt on a regular Mustang for spare, it comes with nothing other than a tire inflator. And then over here you have the uh, little funnel because this is one of those capless uh, cars that doesn't have an actual gas cap on it. So if you need to add from like a gas can, you use that. But uh, the tire inflator is basically all you have. I don't think that has any sort of like goo in it or anything to patch a hole in the tire so if you have like a, a big hole in the tire you're uh you're pretty much on your own and you're not really gonna be able to uh to do anything about that you probably have to get the car towed so again not a lot in here but it is a uh, carpet from the factory i think some of the early cars might not have been but this these uh, more these later ones are and then as far as in the car uh, they made some changes for uh 19 and 20 uh, mainly being you have the red bolts the bolsters are now have this red on the sides before they didn't have that um, you have for the R models you have a lot of interior specific stuff like all this red stitching throughout the interior that's all uh, for the 350 R's only they did that uh, you have the Ford Performance on the kick panel they used to have some different stuff on there I like just the more simple Ford Performance the real simple kick panel uh, again you have the Recaro seats are the only seat available. On the regular 350s, you can offer the uh, leather trim sports seats. The, this car comes one way, and these seats are extremely tight. Uh, I had a, a 2000 Cobra R, if you've been following the channel for a while. Those also had Recaros. The bolsters were not as aggressive. Those were uh, really nice seats, but these seats are definitely more aggressive than those were. So we have, uh, obviously, the Cobra-specific symbol on the steering wheel. R uh, red stitching all around same as on all the other parts of the interior you have this uh center mark same as my uh, my raptor does so that's a nice little touch that kind of ties the cars together mechanical parking brake which i like it's a lot of new cars they went to a electric only on some of the new cars so it's pretty simple in here i mean it's nice with the tech package a little bit nicer stereo system some of the early r models did not come standard with the radio but now they're starting to incorporate it in but you just get a little bit of a nicer radio with the upgraded sound system uh, I like to make also like the mechanical gauge. I know some of the newer Mustangs they have that old digital gauge cluster, but I prefer the mechanical. I think they look, look a little bit more classic, and I like the way they're set up. And then you have a, a small screen in the center for uh, all your various information. Uh, this car's also opted with the uh, carbon fiber uh, dash panel in here. A really nice option. Uh, I think it really spruces up the interior. It kind of matches the way the carbon is in my Raptor, and it's a really nice, high quality. Uh, woven leather it's not really some cheap uh, stamped carbon fiber like you see in some vehicles this is real deal carbon fiber really nice beautiful high gloss uh, and then you also have the uh, the chassis plate in here this is LR 108 so again you have the red here for the uh, for the R models um, the car is pretty uh, pretty basic I mean you have all your climate controls your stereo controls but that said there's no uh, heating or cooling with these seats there's no memory they're all manual adjustment there's no power so this is uh, this is pretty basic. It's it's more well equipped than my 2000 Cobra R was having a radio and air conditioning in it. But uh, other than that, it's a uh, it's a pretty basic vehicle. Yes, you have a little bit more electronics and a little bit more information available through the display screen, but it's still a pretty basic vehicle uh, at heart, as as it's designed to be uh, designed more for track use. And then in the back. There is no rear seat available. They simply just remove it and put this panel in the back seat. So that's just screwed down. You can take it off pretty easily if need be, but uh, this is basically just a two-seat car. So there's really not a lot to it, but I really like what Ford did with a lot of the attention to detail with the red stitching and kind of tying everything in uh, with the steering wheel and on the center console and whatnot. So. Uh, I think they do a really nice job sprucing up this interior, and I'm definitely glad I got that carbon fiber accent piece because I think it really helps uh, kind of tie the whole look and theory of the car in. Just take a quick look under the hood. Uh, no real changes that they've done for the most part that are visible for the new models. Uh, for, in 2019, they went to the Generation 2 Voodoo engine, which was uh, a lot of basically mechanical upgrades to the engine to help strengthen it. Uh, Things like better rods and a lot of internal smaller pieces that they did just to give this make the engine stronger. They also went to the uh, GT500 block, 
So it is a little bit of a, of a stronger setup, especially for uh, if you're gonna really be using the car for track use. So unfortunately, the only thing that I don't like about under this hood is it doesn't really have the presentation that like my 2000 Cobra R or my Viper had at one point. Um, I know they're just trying to keep things uh, simple and more purpose built, but it just doesn't really have that really pop to it. It's just a more simple engine. Uh, I mean, I understand why they're using plastics. They're lighter. They don't have the heat absorption that uh, aluminum would, but uh, you kind of pay a price with that for it. it doesn't have the aesthetics but again it's, it's still a pretty nice looking engine compartment i like the brace they they did they just put the simple ford performance on the center uh the center brace so um again there's just it's just a simple v8 engine no forced induction or anything like that uh the battery's under here it's kind of hidden i'll probably put a battery tender lead on that for winter time storage uh because I, I really don't drive any of my nice vehicles in the winter time the raptor i will a little bit but for the most part i just leave that up to my uh, my daily driver especially when the roads are disgusting covered with salt but something like this i will not drive especially you should never drive a car michelin cup twos any anything below like 50 degrees because they really don't grip too well when it's really cold but this is a pretty simple engine um spark plugs are relatively easy to get to it's pretty simple to work on everything's a pretty common layout everything's where you would expect it to be but uh, so far, I really enjoy this car. Like I said, I only have about 150 miles on it. I just kind of use it uh, to run errands around town and things like that. I don't do any racing with it, nor do I ever intend on doing any racing with it. And I will likely never do any significant modifications to this car as long as I own it. But uh, I really enjoy the car for what it is so far. I'm still kind of breaking it in and getting everything um, properly broken before I really uh, drive it hard at all and put an oil change on it get enough miles on it and whatnot but so far I'm thoroughly enjoying the car the thing's got a lot of power it's really quick extremely precise a lot more than some of the older cars I've had this is Ford did a really an excellent job this is really you can feel it's a purpose-built uh, high-performance car that's designed for uh, significant track use so I hope you enjoyed the video as time goes on I'll have more uh, videos on review in this car um, and some of the maintenance videos that I'll do on it as time goes on. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.